This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another exciting podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and so glad you guys are with me today. You know, when we call this podcast Thoughts Become Things, simply because of the fact I thoroughly believe that what a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I believe his world is created and molded after how he sees himself, how he thinks, how he sees life, his reality, how he sees God, everything of how we see our outwardness will begin to reveal that reflection and that mirroring effect in us and we will convince ourselves that it's real and it shall happen for us. I want you to think about that today. But I wanted to throw that in there so you guys understand where I'm coming from when I name the podcast Thoughts Become Things because I'm a third believer, thorough believer, that we can produce out of how we feel, we can produce of how we see, we can produce out of how we look at life, how we look at things. Many people look at God a certain way. I want you guys to think about it before we get into our teaching today. Many people look at God a certain way. If you see God as angry old man, or if you see God as unjust, or if you see God as any way, then what will happen is you will be drawn to more things that are likened unto that. And what will have to happen is the Holy Spirit will have to break through that pattern to begin to reverse that and show you the truth of God, right? And so you will keep on mimicking the same thing of how you see things or people or yourself or God until the Holy Spirit breaks through that. And begins to say, hold on, this pattern's wrong. This is a wrong view. This is injustice. This is a wrong view of madness. This is a wrong view of conspiracy theory. This is a wrong view of seeing God this way. This is a wrong view of how you see this woman this way and how you see life this way. And so the Holy Spirit will break through that. It's what, we, what the Bible calls a breaker anointing. Because why would we need a breaker anointing? Because it breaks through the pattern, the paradigm, the mindset of how we view situations on this planet. And so that's the job of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, because if not, we would keep on creating, right? <laughs> Out of whatever we, we, you know, we saw how we saw reality or how we saw our spouses or our children or God. And so that's a great thing and the, and the way, great way of looking at the kingdom of God when it deals with things like that. So what I want to talk to you guys today about today is really exciting because I love this verse more than anything, but it's Psalm 1. It's basically the chapter of Psalm 1. And I want to discuss this for a couple of minutes because we had a discussion about this the other day. My sister and I did on the phone and we were talking about this. And I was sharing with her some things that God had placed in my heart about what to talk about and, uh, and you know, and how to look at Psalm 1. So I'm going to call today's podcast Psalm 1 keeping the door open. <laughs> Psalm 1, keeping the door open. And I want you guys, you might think, Psalm 1? It has nothing to do with the door. Well, let's read it today because I believe you're going to get a, a kick out of this. But I also believe you're going to be able to be touched and get a great revelation out of what I'm going to talk about today. So I want us to talk about Psalm 1. Now, Psalm 1 basically says, um, Blessed is he who follows the Lord, you know, he, and it goes on to say things such as, and I love this because it says, um, blessed is he who does not walk in the counsel of the unga- ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor seateth in the sit- seat of the scornful. So, sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So, what we're talking about here, first of all, is God is saying this. Bless is the person, okay, bless is the man who doesn't stand in a place in which he should not be walking in a place in which he should not walk sitteth in a seat he should not be sitting in that's what this that's what the verse is talking about so first and foremost when we look at someone what is it talking about making sure you know your position think about that making sure you know your position my position on what jeremy my position on where i need to be my position on where i need to be sitting which means my seat of authority where in other words where i need to be executing or basically um exercising i should say my authority knowing where i where i need to walk the bible says in another verse you know um it says that your footsteps are ordered by god 
It says that the path of righteous gets brighter and brighter. So there's a power in your step. There's a power in your feet. And because there's power in where you walk, the Bible says, where your foot shall trod, I will give it to you. So we read so many verses on walking, trotting, you know, something about the, you know, the soles of your feet. So it's letting you know there's power and authority in where you walk. So what this verse is talking about at the beginning is it's reminding us that you better know where you're walking. Because if you walk in a way or a path that is stumbling to somebody, or a path that would lead you astray, right? Then guess what? And I won't tell you the, the, the surprise of it, I'll get to it in a minute. But the key thing is, don't do that. Because if you do, guess what? We're going to begin to find out, uh, you know, things that can happen to you and things that, that won't happen to you. So let's read it a little bit further. But then it goes on to talk about, but standing in the, standing in the way of the sinner. So it goes on to talk about that. So what does that look like? It means don't stand. You know, the Bible talks about what, you know, when you've done all, when you stand, when you've done all you can do, continue to stand. So it's letting you know, it's reminding you that know the power of where you're standing. So, so far we've read there's power obviously in your walking that wherever your feet walks, make sure it's on the path in which you, you know that God has set before you because there's power in your feet. There's power in your feet of positivity, which means there's power in your feet to con- to consume, to possess, the Bible talks about, to own, have ownership of the land, uh, to spiritually and naturally possibly own the land, to recover it, right? To sustain it. So you've got so many things that deal with walking. But then it talks about here, it deals with the place of standing. And the Bible makes it plain that, you know, when you stand, when you've stood, continue to stand. So it's a reminding us there must be a power and an executed authority in when I stand. Why? Because even if you think of different cultures, this is so cool to me, even if you think of different cultures, now those of you that are real religious and, oh, I'm going to, you know, Jeremy's going to turn me off when he talks about Eastern religions and Buddhism and everything else, then you know what? You can turn me off. I love you dearly, but you might be too religious for me. Because I believe that we can find a type of truth, hear me closely, a type of truth in any principle on this planet. If Muhammad Ali says a principle, do I say, oh, Muhammad Ali, he wasn't a Christian? That principle is evil from Satan. Well, no, that would be ridiculous. If somebody was to say a good principle such as, hey, when you walk outside, you know, let the sun be a reminder that there's joy in the atmosphere. I'll just make up a good principle, hopefully, you know. And, and let's just say Oprah Winfrey said it or Ellen DeGeneres or, or Muhammad Ali or somebody. Would you say, oh, my God, these people or that person or that person might not be a Christian? Oh, my God. Do you throw it out? Or is it true that when you walk outside scientifically and medically, that when you walk outside the sun, that if you are down or depressed and going through a little lull moment, that the sun, because you get vitamin D and vitamin C, that the sun actually, it's good for you to be outside, right? So would that principle be true? Absolutely it would be. Right? And so a principle, folks, is just a principle. Okay? So even within other religions, now that we've gotten over your religious spirits, even in other religions, such as Buddhism, or I think Hinduism might, but Buddhism uh, has this has this quality about the power of standing when it does yoga. And it does certain things. Now, many of you are like, oh my God, Satan, 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 Satan. No, hear me out. Okay, hear me out. Because yoga is posing. And it all depends on how you want to look at it. If it's exercising to you without a religious tradition or without a stance on some type of Eastern, you know, uh, Hindu, then you know what? Then you've won the victory of that. All right. So that's what we're talking about today. So when you do, uh, there's a yoga uh, stance that actually deals with standing. And there's one that's called the crane, you know, in which you, you know, stand on one foot and, you know, the other foot, you know, sort of hike up a little bit, you know, to, to get your balance ready. But there's one that basically deals with standing and it deals like a meditative type of standing. Steel. And so my whole point to that is there must be power in other religions, for lack of better words, that understand the power of stance. And so in Buddhism, they actually have that within yoga, and I think Hinduism as well, that deals with a power uh, stance pose. Because it sort of brings you to a place of being grounded and balanced. And it brings you to a place of when you stand erect, it sort of shows you are like a tree that can bend and be flexible, but your feet are planted on the ground. Now think about that. Does that sound voodoo to you, Hindu to you, or, you know, or some type of mantra? No. 
Not at all. Come on, folks. What, what, what they even understand is there's a power when you take a stance and knowing that you're, you're, you know, that you can be flexible and bendable, but your feet are firm upon the ground. Let's say it how the Bible says it. Plant your feet upon the solid rock, which is Christ. So see, there's power when even we have a stance. So when we stand, there's a power that surges through us from the Lord that lets us know there's a power in you when you walk. There's a power in you when you talk. The power of life and death is in your tongue. And there's a power in you when you stand. How many of you growing up, your parents would, you know, you would slump over, especially when you're eating dinner? I still to this day, it's funny, I can be in public and in restaurants or I can be with my family and a part of me will drive me crazy because I remember all my life, she still would, my mother always saying, you know, hold your shoulders back. Hold your shoulders back. Because, you know, you don't, you know, because you don't, it'll, it'll grow that way or whatever, you know. But, you know, and plus you should never eat slumped over. It's not good for your digestive system, you know, right? So you want to sit up straight. And so there's a power in, in sitting up straight. It reminds me of the woman in the Bible who was bowed over for 18 years and the, and, and Jesus went and healed her and she began to be erect. In other words, she, her, you know, she was bowed over. She couldn't even stand up straight. And all of a sudden she began to be healed and she, and she began to stand straight up. So there's a power in a stand. And yet, the, and yet right here we're reading about, right here about, make sure you don't even stand in the way of somebody that could, that you could be a stumbling block or stand in the way of anyone who could actually cause, that, that you could cause them to stumble or fall or maybe be led astray or maybe just, let's give it another way how God put it to me. This is a great way when we deal with walking and standing and not being able to be in that path of blocking somebody's joy, blocking somebody's avenue or way or way of or salvation or way of grace or way of love or way of peace. Here's a great way, something we do not want to do. When we're in public, you know what? We, that we, even with, with people in general. That's why it's always good to be positive. When we're people, with people in general, is it really wise to be in Walmart, which I'm not a Walmart fan. I'll, I'll, I, I like to upgrade to Target. But, you know, if you're in, in, if you're in some kind of grocery store or Walmart or whatever, and, you know, and you're in a bad mood and you're like, oh my God, that stupid woman, she got my parking place. You know, how dare her? You know, and so I'm going to flip her off or I'm going to, you know, get out and just make sure she knows my attitude that I'm mad about this. Or you get into the grocery store and you're trying to buy groceries, you get to the counter and you you notice the, per- the clerk taking you out is not really talking to you and you're that person where you're a people person and you think everybody should talk to you and be quote unquote friendly which means if someone's not talking to you that means you're obviously not friendly wrong answer people don't have to talk to you and doesn't mean they're not friendly sometimes they're just shy right so give them the benefit of the doubt folks see the glass half full not half empty and so you're going to sort of pull an attitude a little bit right well guess what you've done you stand it in the way of the sinner. You standeth in the ways, the Bible says, I use the word standeth. You standeth, you're standing in the way of somebody needing to see your light, your joy, your hope, your grace, maybe your walk, uh, because you got a pep in your step because you're happy today, right? You're standing in the way. And so I named this today, uh, you know, keeping the door open because you have to remember that God has told us through Psalm 1, do, you know, walk where you, you know, know where you're walking. And don't stand and don't walk and don't sit in people's places that would cause them to stumble, see something wrong, or give them a bad attitude or cop an attitude with them, right? Uh, because the thing is, you're closing the door of what maybe God has allowed them to need to see from you and through you. And maybe it's not your words. Maybe it's just your pep and your step. And maybe it's just sort of your smile on your face or the joy you have in saying, thank you so much. Have a blessed day. You don't have to sit here and say, oh, God loves you so much. You're going to die. No, you don't have to. You don't have to do that. I mean, it's great if you do, but you don't have to. The key thing is you don't know what people need that day. And so keep your head held high. What does the Bible say? Look up and know your Draws nigh. There's something about even up lifting your head up. So we've read so far about your walk, about your stance, about your head, right? And the joy of the Lord's your strength. So that joy includes a smile and a little bit of laughter that doeth good like a medication. And it, and it talks about also the sit, uh, not, don't even seat in the, sit in the seat of the scornful. That's a lot of S's for you. Sit in the seat of the scornful. So even here, we're recognizing where it's letting us know there's power and authority in where you sit. 
Imagine God. Imagine God on his throne and his power is in his seat, his, his seating on the powerful throne of grace. So there's power in even you sitting. And it says, don't sit in the seat. So what it's saying also is, on a reverse note, is it's letting you know why. Because there's power in your seat. Your sitting position. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that Christianity talks so much about this? And go back to the Old Testament where some of these scriptures are found, like, we just, like we're reading now. Judaism, Judaism talks about this. Buddhism talks, there's a position in Buddhism that talks about sitting in a lotus position. And that's how they meditate. Sitting in a lotus position, which is a, which is a type of meditation. If you've ever seen these pictures out there that deal with meditation, they're always sitting in what they call the lotus position, with their legs crossed, you know, because they feel sitting in a position is a, is a sitting, is a seating position that would help people to meditate. So even other religions understand the power of sitting. I mean, come on, this is crazy. I love this. And so we recognize here where there is a power in walking, standing, obviously talking as we've discussed before, power of life and death in your tongue, sitting down, sitting still, because there's an authority in those positions. And God, all through his word, is reminding you that in all those positions are what you do 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and don't even realize you're doing it. And it's letting you know, keep the door wide open because you don't know who's looking at you. Keep the door wide open because you have no idea who's who's, see, who's watching you, who's paying attention, who's listening to you, who's looking for that pep in your step, who's looking for the smile on your face, who's looking for that light to resonate uh, through you. And from you to blind maybe their darkness that you don't even see that there's, that's upon them. Now here's what's really cool. I'll, I'll read this a little bit before we close. If you go further down, it goes on to say, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, in that in which he meditates day and night. There's that word meditation. That's pretty cool. The meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. Now notice this. Notice. Here's what it's saying. If you keep the door open... Here's, here's my, here's my, my translation 101, Jeremy Lopez version, right? If you keep the door open and you don't stand in the way and you don't walk in the way and you don't, uh, talk a bad talk and you don't walk a bad walk and you don't, in other words, if you don't stand and walk and sit in a way that would cause somebody to stumble, put another way, if you don't stand, if you don't walk and if you don't, um, you know, sit by keeping that door closed, to somebody else that needs to see something through your open door, then guess what? Something, then you're not going to be able to reap the benefits of what this someone is just telling you to do. Because if you don't do these things and you keep the door wide open and you allow yourself to be the avenue, the open door, the channel, the whatever avenue you want to call it, by allowing them to see and to keep the door open through your stance and your walk and your talk and don't get in the way as a closed door, then here's what God says will happen to you. That when you delight in Him, He says you'll be a tr like a tree planted by rivers of living water. You will bear forth much fruit in your season. Your leaves as a tree will never wither and whatever you do, you will prosper. The reason why most people don't prosper, now once again, let me say this. It says whatever he does prospers. Now in this verse, it actually is talking about natural prosperity. I'm not going to lie about it. Because I, I'm blunt, when the Bible says something, I'm blunt about that, right? Because I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It does talk about prosperity, natural prosperity. The leaves on a tree is the prosperity or the wealth or the abundance of the tree. That's why Jesus cursed the tree that didn't bear forth fruit. Because fruit and leaves represent a an abundance, a prosperity, a new beginning. It represents a newness. And so, if there's not a newness and an abundance flowing from you, you might get cursed. <laughs> so be careful. Amen? And so, because we were created to produce, we were created to multiply, we were created to be, to live in an abundant world. So here it is talking about, like the example of the leaves and the fruit, that, that you should bear forth this naturally, because Jesus didn't curse a spiritual tree, folks, right? He produced, he, he, he cursed the one that was natural, 
before him that wasn't producing fruit. So we can't spiritualize this because it's not completely spiritually. But yet, but yet the great thing about this is it actually does in many, many other verses that would actually back this one up to and flow with it. It does also represent prosperity and prospering in the soul. In the, in the, in, in your body and in your spirit. As I always bring forth, you're a triune being. God wants to prosper you in your emotions. He wants to prosper you spiritually with His Word and knowing His will. And He wants to prosper you in the natural. You cannot separate any of these three whatsoever because you are all three of these. You are one in three, three in one, right? If you separate these, you might as well say, well, God, I'm going to keep you and I'm going to throw out the Holy Spirit in Jesus. Or Jesus, I'm going to keep you, throw out the other two. You can't do that, right? You take them as a package. Well, take yourself as a package, my friend, because God wants to prosper you in your emotions to have the joy, the grace, the hope, the peace, the, the tranquility, to have the right emotions, the high level emotions that even science talks about is like energy, because all of our emotions and feelings and thoughts are nothing more than energy. And there's high level energy vibrations of joy and there's low frequencies of sadness. So, so once again, science has proven everything that God always talks about. And so this is what it's letting you know that if you, if you keep yourself as an open door and don't cop an attitude and don't stand in the way of somebody who might need, needs to see something that, cause it is maybe, uh, coming from you, almost like this air coming from you mentality, then guess what? You will prosper. If you keep the doors always wide open by being true and genuine, you know, to God in the sense of being always that person who is a light in the darkness, then guess what? You'll always prosper. So I always say, if you don't, if you're not prospering right now, if you're not bearing forth fruit right now, if you're, le- if you as a tree are not bearing forth leaves, then what I would do is I would honestly say this. Let's check our attitudes and just make sure we're not being closed doors to people. Because it's so easy. I say this all the time because, you know, be, coming from a, when I was a kid, a Baptist background, and then coming from a little bit of Methodist, and then knowing mo- the majority of my life was raised in the charismatic Pentecostal spirit filled world, you know, I adapt to all three of them to be able to bring forth a leverage effect of a balance in my life to say, you know what, I don't want to, I, I, I see the good and the truth in all of them. And knowing that I can be able to look at this and sit here and say to myself, you know, the key thing here is realizing that I have to begin to check, keep a check over my own spirit to make sure that if I'm, an, if I'm a closed door, then I can't go out there and say this. This is the point I'm making. I can't go out there and say, well, you know what? I'm going to treat everybody bad because they're not, they're not Christians. They're not like me. They don't believe like me. So you know what? I have the right to talk to, to the clerk, treat her like she's secondary. I have the right to talk to a Hispanic person on the street as if, well, are you legal or illegal? And God's like, hey, everybody in my kingdom's legal, so shut up. <laughs> I, I have I have no problem with telling people even though that's rude. I have no problem with telling people that. You know, when when you want to measure illegal and legal, I'll tell you from Jeremy Lopez's mouth, you need to shut up. Because according to the kingdom of God, we're all legal and we're all aliens to God and praise God he received us. If he receives us, by golly, you can receive somebody else. The outsiders, the Bible says. Amen. I have no qualms about that and I won't back down on my on my points on that with anyone on this planet. So if you look at the if you look at the uh, the understanding of being in public you realize that guess what? It's so easy to look down on our nose, uh, under our noses at other people and then go home and worship God because it's easy to worship God. I can't see, but it's harder to be authentic and genuine and make a disciplinary of, of myself to be loving and kind and gentle and compassionate to those that I can see. So see, it's so easy to be in church and say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I just worship you and just cry and moan and, and, and wail. But then you can leave there and you're like, that stupid clerk at the service station. My goodness. They're probably some Muslim. They won't even, you know, uh, won't even give me my, you know, do this or do this and not even smile at me. Well, guess what? It might be you. Because if you're not prospering and if you're not bearing forth fruit, it could be because you allowed yourself to be a closed door when maybe that person behind the counter needed to see a gentle, kind smile coming from somebody who claims to be a Christian. Right? Or being a light or maybe saying, hey man, I don't hear days going, but I can tell you this funny joke I heard today. Making them laugh. Right? Or just actually acknowledging them by looking them in the eyes and saying, thank you so much for what you do. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great, wonderful day today. That's keeping the doors wide open and not allowing your doors to be shut because if they're shut, you're standing in the way of somebody. Hello? 
from seeing what they need to see about the power of God, salvation, kingdom, whatever it is, or joy. So I will want to leave this message with you today, guys, because I love the word. I love someone more than anything. It's such a cool chapter. But I wanted to share this with you guys today because this is my lifestyle. This is how I live. I love to be able to keep a check over myself to say, eh, eh, hold on, hold on. Doesn't matter who that person is. They deserve love. They deserve kindness. They deserve joy. You know, so that's the point I want to bring out today because I want to always keep my doors open. Why? Because Jeremy needs to prosper. <laughs> Jeremy needs to bear forth fruit. Jeremy needs his, le- his leaves to never wither. Hallelujah. I mean, I need that in my life. I don't know about you, but I'm like, Lord Jesus, I need to prosper in my life, right? And so do you in my soul, in my, in the natural, and especially in my spirit. So I wanted to leave this message with you guys today and thank Thank you as always for always being so supportive taking the journey with me as i laugh and i get on my soapbox and and just share things that god has placed in my heart i always say this in podcasts i share with you guys what god's placed in my heart to help my life rotate i don't believe in going outside of myself and getting some sermon or something that is outside of my league in the sense of something i'm not really manifesting or i'm not really living out right now just because it sounds good or sounds pretty i'd rather speak on behalf of where i I am right now in my life of saying, gosh, this is really touching me. And I want to share that with you guys. I love it. I really do. And I hope you do as well. I want to encourage you guys as we close today. Stay tuned as always every single Monday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time on Instagram uh, under Identity Network or either Facebook under Jeremy Lopez Resources. Check out every every Monday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time, my uh, my live. I do a live every Monday morning. I teach from one of my books or I share something. Who knows what I'll do? We just have fun. And also uh, every month, usually the third weekend of every, or excuse me, the third Wednesday of every month, I try to do a prophetic life night on Instagram and Facebook where I do a complete hour of nothing but just non-stop prophesying to people unless I have somebody I'm interviewing as a surprise. And this month we're doing it, I think the 28th, let me verify that here, uh, we're doing it, that's right, February 28th, which is next week at 6 p.m. Central Time. So that's going to be February 28th, next week, 6 p.m. Central Time. Okay, so adjust your time, your time zone and join with me to, uh, on that night on Instagram and Facebook. I'd love for you to, and who knows, maybe God might prophesy to you. Maybe you need to be on there just to say, I want to, I want to help support Jeremy. I love the support. All right. Don't always come to say, gimme, gimme, gimme. Come to be a great supporter, right? We love to give as well, right? And so be a part of that. Also, do not forget to join our book of the month program and don't forget actually to join our prophetic word program to where every month on the same day, I will prophesy to you and we will email it to you directly and you'll get it in your email every month. How cool is that? So do that today. Sign up. Go to identitynetwork.net. Sign up for our prophetic word um, program and our book of the month program and join us as we join in on this great adventure we call the kingdom of God. And as always, folks, I'll close with this. If you don't like your day, your thoughts will become things, right? If you don't like your day, I've got a great idea for you. Change your thoughts and you'll change your life. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.